farm. So I'm Casey Hansen. Um, by day, I'm a science teacher, and by night, I am a flower farmer. On top of being um, a mother and a wife, so I'm very excited um, to be sharing these videos with you. Um, I live in Swanton, Vermont, which is very north. Um, we're only about a 10 minute drive to Canada. Um, we're still very cold here in March. And my last frost date is about mid-May. Um, so I'm still feeling like I have a long ways to go before I finally get to be out in the farm and start these seeds, but I'm very excited and really hopeful um, that it'll happen sooner than rather than later and I'll get out there quickly. So I wanted to take some time to share with you all like a little bit about Floam Flower Farm. I'm really hoping that this YouTube channel will provide some really great resources for um, beginning flower farms or hobby farms um, just like mine. I found YouTube and podcasts to be such a valuable resource as I've been starting my flower journey. So I'm really hoping to provide another resource um, for people in colder climates, maybe in Vermont. So why Floam Flower Farm? If you didn't realize this already, I'm a bit of a science geek. Um, I studied um, microbiology, molecular genetics at UVM, um, and I've always had a really big curiosity about soil microbiology. Um, but phloem is the vascular part um, of plants that have flowers. It's a part of the flower and the stem where the sugars travel from the leaves to the roots of the flower. And I just thought that connection um, to photosynthesis was really cool. Um, I liked how it sounded. Um, it's definitely mispronounced frequently, uh, but maybe by using this name, I can also provide some education to people um, on this really cool term and maybe help people learn a little bit more about plants. Also, like what a great metaphor, you know, transporting nutrients and storing them, taking care of yourself, feeding and nurturing the soil and the world around us. Um, that's why I'm here, that's why I garden, um, is this idea of soil health. Soil health is such an important part of our future, especially as um, the world combats climate change. And I'm really hoping to be part of that um, with my little farm here in Vermont. This is my second year flower farming. Um, my first year went okay. Um, I had a lot of weeds and that was my biggest barrier um, as I definitely need to do some better work on weed prevention this year. Some of my goals this year are to provide a U-Pick opportunity for my community um, if I can get my flowers having less weeds and more ability to walk through them um, without tripping hazards. Um, I also built a flower stand last year that um, I really, really love how that turned out. It was wonderful. Um, my biggest issue this year, my biggest concern that I don't really have a solution for is a cooler. Um, I tried to just keep them cool. My flowers cool in my garage last year and it just wasn't enough. Um, so, so far my plan this year is to get an air conditioner and find a really cold room. Um, and I hope that that'll suffice so far. I really don't have room in my fridge or room for a second fridge. Um, so that's kind of where I'm stuck at the moment, but hopefully once I have some funds, um, I'll be able to invest in a cool bot. Um, that's like a dream is I'd like to get a cool bot and build like a mobile um, cooler on a trailer. I feel like that'd be cool for a couple reasons. Um, ironic, cool. Um, I feel like that'd be a great idea for a couple reasons because um, if I can put it on a trailer, I can actually tow my flowers in my cooler. Um, so for events or traveling or delivery, that'd be really helpful. 
So as you can see, I'm in zone 4B. I still have a long ways to go before I can plant anything outside. Um, we still have a good layer of snow. Um, it's not looking to go away anytime soon, much to my dismay. Um, but I'm really looking forward to getting out there and working the field so I can get these plants in. Last year, I was able to get flowers in the ground around mid to late April. So I'm really hopeful um, for that same time period this year. As you can see behind me, this is my vegetable garden. Um, so they're my raised beds for my vegetables, but I actually have tulips and daffodils growing in there right now. Only about 100, I have never grown them before. So I just got a cheaper, more affordable pack to see how this went. But I had listened to a podcast somewhere that planting your bulbs in your vegetable garden was really great for the soil over the winter. And I'm really hopeful that not only I'll get some great tulips and daffodils, but I'll also, um, it'll help my soil for my vegetable garden this year. So this is my indoor seed starting space. Um, as of right now, I only have a few trays started. Um, and if you didn't know, so I can fit about 36 plants in each one of, one of these trays because I use a two inch soil blocker. Um, so far, what I have is, These are my stock babies. Um, it's my first time growing stock. I'm really excited to see how they're doing. I'll probably go through pretty soon and um, remove the extra plants here. Um, I am, I always get scared and I always start, I put, I put a few seeds in each one of my blocks just to make sure I get germination. But as you can see, I've had a fantastic amount of germination on my stock. These are my little baby snaps. This is my first succession of snaps. It looks like I've only had some issues here and I think that was a watering issue. But again, once these get a little bit bigger, I will um, either move or try remove um, the extras. So I only have one main plant in the middle. These are my Larkspur. Um, I have a few different varieties here. Um, again, I got a bit more germination than I had expected. Pretty excited about it. Um, I did have some issues over here, um, but after doing some research, I think it's because I used seed from last year. So it turns out that Larkspur isn't one of those seeds that you should be using, um, reusing. Um, even if it's stored correctly, um, you should probably buy new Larkspur seed every year. But just um, as you can see, we're in a sketchy room of my house. Um, this is like the mechanics room where my electric box and my boiler are. So it's actually the warmest room I've had really good luck with the humidity in here already um, and my germination has gone really well. Um, I actually don't even use heat mats as much as I should um, because I found that I didn't really need it in this space so far, but I'm still learning. I also store all, a lot of my flower things in here. So I have jars and jars um, for what I'm gonna be putting in my flower subscriptions this year. I also just have some random other pieces of equipment that I'll keep stored here through the winter. Um, and this fan is on its last legs, but it's what I use to help circulate some of the air around the space. Um, and also I will point it more directly on the plants sometimes to make, to kind of help get them stronger as they grow. Um, and just for some other notes, like these are just some normal shop lights that I got at um, the hardware store, probably Lowe's. They're very inexpensive. These are very cheap lights. I had a great success with them last year. Um, it does involve a lot of outlets because these ones don't connect to each other. However, I did end up buying one like this um, down the road and those actually can connect to each other to make outlet space better. Um, and then you can kind of see it right there um, in my outlet is I did find like a, like a nice timer for the outlet. 
um, where I don't have to come and turn these lights on every day. They are set on a timer to turn on with the fan. Um, and we're at about 12 hours at this point um, that I keep my lights on. But I do adjust it depending on what plants that I have out here. Mm -hmm. 